Hello and thank you for watching. This is the Rayburn Cyberhammer maintenance and uh, bearing install and removal video. We're going to show you how to take apart the Rayburn Cyberhammer in the field if need be and uh, do repairs to it. Um, it is a moving mechanism. Sometimes, uh, sometimes that is necessary. So this is a very simple system. The first step is to remove the clip. And for that, my preferred tool is a dental pick with the straight end in conjunction with this piece of brass which has been shaped at the end. You can use two of these tools, two of these tools, whatever suits you. I use the brass piece to hold one end of this clip from moving and the other end to push the clip. See how I'm holding it like a pencil? gives me a lot of control and I've only got a very small amount of it ex um, extending from my fingers. Uh, the key word here is control. If you slip you can scratch up the unit. Uh, there's no need for that. I'm also holding my, uh, my middle finger up against the clip here so that we don't have the clip flying across the room. That's not a fun time. Here we go. I'm going to push off with my right hand and that clip's going to come right off. There it comes. Easy does it. Now, when we get to this point, the clip is still being held on by its own tension, but um, uh, it, there's no need to push it off with our two uh, with, with our two-handed system anymore. I can just fetch it right off. It's a little more controlled that way. There we are. There's the clip. And we're now going to show you the way that the uh, the 200 series, 300, 400, 500, and 550 series looks on the inside. There are some slight differences. Uh, the current 200 series has a washer in the back. Um, the 300 series only has one bearing in the front. And the 400 and 500 and 550 series have a bearing in the front and the back. So yours will be accordingly. Now when you take this apart, just jiggle it a little bit and pull straight out. Notice there's a bearing in the back there. That can be removed. And set aside. We'll set the hammer aside as well. Now what we need to do here if we're going to change the front bearing This is the best tool for it. Uh, it will grab this Woodruff key very securely and in a controlled fashion we can take it out. So here we go, we're going to open up the pliers. This is a diagonal cutters. We're going to open up the pliers, grab it right at the back here with the inside most part of the jaw, like so. I'm going to squeeze well not so much that I'm cutting the the Woodruff key, but I am uh, making a small indentation in there so that so it's not it's not going to slip out of my out of my control. Take your hand like this, push off on your, on the heel of your hand, and out it comes. Set your tool aside. There may be a small amount of uh, thread locking compound on the key itself. So this is a fantastic time to clean the entire system. I'm going to take off the front bearing which is uh, identified by this small tab. Set that aside. To clean the system just take a, a, a small rag of your choice, towel, and wipe off any residue whatsoever. And the same is true for the bore of the head. Nice and clean.
if you've purchased a set of bearings from us, we'll have also sent you with some lubricant. Currently what we use is a, what's called a Molly 60 paste. It's a, a high grade lubricant that is designed specifically for super high pressure applications like uh, the cyber hammer is. Now just, just barely dip your dental pick tool in there. Create a small patch, 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 and that's really all you need. Put your new bearing on. and spin it. If you use a lot more than that, you're just wasting the lubricant, first of all, and second of all, uh, if, if you use too much of it, it can squeeze out onto your hand when you're tuning. Uh, there's no need for that. Replace the bearing, or excuse me, replace the, replace the key. The best way to do this is to use a small amount of high strength thread locker. Just a little bit, once again. I'm just going to Put a tiny, 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 tiny drop on either side here. And that'll get squeezed into it and ensure that our, uh, that our key doesn't work its way out while it's being used. Now, on the 550 series, you've got a front and a back bearing. On the Grand Cyber Hammer series, you've got a front bearing, a secondary bearing, usually a hard bearing we call it and then you've got the woodruff key obviously a second bearing on the back side and then your final outside bearing and the clip goes over that so it gives you a little bit more bearing surface since this is a 550 we'll take that off now it's important that the tip of the Woodruff key lines up just with just a very small amount of clearance from this front bearing just so that it won't rub. Place this in by hand as far as it'll go and it'll go a little ways in. Then take a piece of, uh, of cardstock, fold it over several times, wood shim, what have you. Place it here. And what we're going to do is press this bear, this this key in. I'm going to use a pair of vice grips. Uh, this is uh, this is this video is geared toward field repair or field install. So these are tools you'd have in your kit. Um, if I was doing this in the shop, I would be using a vice, a little bit more controlled. But this is fine. So I'm just going to squeeze, and there we have it. No dents on the back side nice and even. Now we're going to lubricate the back side. Use approximately the same amount of lubricant. Patch, 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 patch. And that should be good. Just four little dots on either end. Now there's a front and a back to the head and you'll only be able to fit it in one way. Wiggle it in and it seats in nicely. Take the, take the back bearing. Now it has a slight bezel on one side. You can't see it on the camera but you'll be able to see it in person. Place that bezel on the outside just for comfort. Wiggle it on. If it doesn't go on immediately, take it off and try again. There we go. Easy as that. And the final step is to replace the, uh, the clip. Now this should, at least on the 550 and 400 series, it should just slide right on. On, uh, on other series, you may have to tap it on a little bit with a, a wooden mallet, plastic, rubber hammer, that sort of thing. Just something that won't slip and scratch or, or dent. And there we go. That's all there is to it. You now have a freshly installed and tight set of bearings. And uh, that's all there is to it. Good luck and enjoy.